Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. And what I wanted to do was show you guys, um, you know, how I'm starting to use Substance Alchemist. You know, Alchemist is still relatively new um, for our CG creation stuff, but I've been following it, you know, here and there, and I've actually just started really getting into it and starting to use it in conjunction with Substance Designer. And it's really become more of my composition tool, and I obviously think that's what they intended it for, but it's a really slick way to you know, really just focus on your core components like materials and filters and um, atlases, stuff like that inside of Substance Designer. And just think of them as individual components like a piece of paper or a cigarette butt kind of thing. And then utilize Substance Alchemist as your composer of your textures. All right, it's a really slick workflow. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to walk through the creation of this just to get, you know, ourselves more familiar with Substance Alchemist. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, how to import resources from Substance Source, which is super sweet. We're going to, you know, utilize the Substance Launcher here. All right. And we are going to talk about how to construct our particular texture here that you see here with all these different filters that come with Substance Alchemist. This whole thing was literally started from a single base material, and that material was this guy right here. All right, and everything else was created inside of Alchemist here. All right, so I want to walk you guys through that process just so you can see how to do it. And I, I want to do more of these textures for you guys, just so you can see, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm working. Maybe you know, share your thoughts about what you guys are doing with Substance Alchemist. It's still relatively new, so. Uh, lots more stuff to learn, but let's walk through the creation of this dirty wood floor. All right, so here I have the Substance Launcher launched, and this is a really great tool. I highly recommend starting to use the Substance Launcher because it gives you access to all your Substance applications really, really fast. Now, all you need to do is just go and go to Substance3D.com forward slash download, and you can download it here. All right, so this will allow you to download the launcher. And then it'll basically manage all of your Substance software for you. So what I'm going to do is come over here and launch Substance Alchemist. All right, so now I'm still getting used to this, but it's really fun, actually. And I really like um, how quickly you can start to generate new textures just from all the you know materials that we have in Substance Source or materials that you've made yourself. So here we have the Substance Alchemist project launcher right here and what i'm going to do is just go and create a new project and this is just going to be called uh youtube uh textures i'm going to try to do you know a bunch of textures in here just to you know for practice and for fun so you guys can see you know what i've been doing and maybe provide feedback all right so for this particular texture i want to make a wood floor that basically has you know a bunch of scattered stuff on top of it all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here to the starter materials over here. All right. And this is in the explore tab. So substance alchemist is kind of divided up into these different tabs to allow you to do uh, different, you know, operations. So explore tab allows you to find materials. Inspire allows you to manage colors basically. All right. And the create allows you to create new textures. Those where you'll spend a lot of your time and then manage allows you to manage things like exporting your uh, textures, managing your collections, stuff like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is just keep this guy on the plane. If you want to change the actual mesh for this, you can come over here to the settings, the viewer settings, and you can go and, and you know set it to any mesh that you want. You can also come in here and change the, the lighting. For now, I'm just going to keep this stuff uh, the way it is right here. All right, and so let's go back to our Explorer, and I want to find uh, this wood generic. All right, so let's just drag and drop that into the scene over here, and this will basically allow us to get started. All right, cool. So now we have this generic wood here. And what I want to do is I want to make this more into like a floor type of um, texture. All right. So this is basically going to become the base for our particular wood floor. Okay. So think of this as, you know, your starting point. Currently, you know, by double clicking this or drag and dropping into the scene, you get your starter position now or starter, you know, texture. Now what we can do is we can come in here and start to tweak, you know, a bunch of things like the color. Let's say I want to make this, you know, maybe a little bit darker over here and a little bit more of a reddish tone and you can go and mess with all the tweaks now these are all just basic substance uh, designer files right here you can import your own as well uh, you can come and play around with all the different settings so you get something that you really like you can do a mix of those two noise flow that actually looks pretty cool just like that and you can change the knots density and really you know a lot of this is um, experimentation with all these particular sliders over here so I'm going to increase the knots there. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. 
Really cool. That actually is going to be way better for me. I want this to be not so shiny. All right, so at this point, we now have the wood that we want. This is our base wood that we're going to then modify using a bunch of the filters that are available here in Alchemist. So what we want to do is we want to save it down into our collection. All right, this is basically where you manage all the particular base materials that you have created. All right, so I'm going to hit the Save button over here. And you'll notice that it's going to be sent to the YouTube Textures First Collection. All right, and I'm going to call this the base uh, wood for now. Let's put a little underscore under there. And hit save. And there we go. So now we've got our generic wood. At this point, what I'm going to do is just go over to the Create tab now. And this is where we're going to actually start to create our texture. All right, this Explorer is, lets you explore different materials and, you know, change them and create presets. Once you're happy and you have enough presets that you've created, uh, move on over to the Create panel. All right, and we're going to then drag and drop this guy into the stack over there. All right, so we can also delete it by selecting it and then just hitting the remove layer. All right, so again, we're just going to drag and drop that into that stack there. Cool. So now we've got our first layer for our texture, you know, and you can still go and tweak everything. So you have all the different technical parameters here and you have all the, the main material parameters here that came out of the substance designer file. All right, so let's move now over to adjusting things so let's say now i've got this base wood which is, looks pretty cool but I, I actually want to adjust things this is where we start using the filters over here inside of substance alchemist so um, if i come into the uh, tool and let's just put down our first filter i'm just going to drag and drop this adjustment filter on top of that wood there and what this allows me to do now is it allows me to play around with adjustments on that particular base material all right, so we can go and adjust the, the albedo, sharpen it up a little bit, maybe change the hue a little bit. This is really cool because then now we have even further control that might not be available in this particular layer here. We have all these other controls now over here, which is great. So I'm going to increase that contrast a little bit. Yeah, and because this is all procedural, um, you can always come back to each of these layers whenever you want. All right, so I think that's going to be good for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to get this to look more like a wood floor. So again, we're going to utilize a filter for this. So I'm going to come over here uh, to the generator, and I want to get the parquet pattern over here. So I'm just going to drag that and drop that into my layer stack. And look at that. We now have a wood floor. Pretty cool stuff. Really, really fast, really easy to start making uh, these textures. All right, so instead of having to you know, go through and create a lot of you know, different network setups inside of Substance Designer, you can, you know, make the little parts and components inside of Substance Designer, import them into Alchemist, and start to compose your textures. It really um, is a great way to, as a, as a composition tool, um, kind of sits on top of Substance Designer. So you base, basically build all of your base components inside of Designer and use Alchemist to compose everything. All right, so let's uh, go and make this stuff a little bit bigger here now. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, something like that. One thing you can do is you can utilize, if you come down to the tool down here, uh, you can utilize the scale checker. And this gives you kind of a reference about how big a human is compared to your texture. I find that very helpful. All right, so I'm just gonna actually delete that guy. So that's a pretty good size for now. I think, let's play around with the offset a little bit. Looks pretty cool. Kind of want to make it feel you know, a little random there. Now the, the default uh, generators in here, you know, it seems like they're still getting things built for these. And so there's not a lot of randomization available for this particular pattern here. Um, but you could always go and build your own and import it yourself as well, which I'm going to cover, you know, as I start to get more familiar with Alchemist myself. But this is really cool just right off the bat being able to do stuff like this. We can also come up here to the pattern type and change the type of wood that we have. Really cool stuff. So if you're making, you know, more of a wood floor that looks like that, boom, done already. Cool. So I'm going to leave that on English. And at this point, I feel pretty good about that. I think I'm going to move on and start to uh, do a little bit of weathering on this. So let's start that off by uh, utilizing some dirt. So let's come down to the weathering rollout here. And I'm just going to drag and drop some dirt over here. Just to add some dirt to the top of this. Now, obviously, that's going to be way too much. I just want, you know, kind of subtle hints of some dirt here. Maybe play around with the volume a little bit. 
Uh, definitely do some edge protection on that wood there. And let's bring down the roughness on our base wood. So let's go to the adjustment layer for this and go to the reflection. And let's just adjust some of this stuff. I don't need too much of that roughness there. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go back to the dirt over here. And let's just pull back the opacity a little bit more. Maybe spread contrast. Yeah, I just want to make it. I don't need it to be so contrasty. Maybe uh, pull down the variation on that there. And I'll just pull down the quantity even a little bit more. Just kind of want to rough it up a little bit. All right, cool. I think that'll work pretty good. Let's go now. And let's go and do some dust. So I'm going to put some dust up here. And right off the bat, it's going to go and cover everything. So we're just going to drop down that quantity again. And change that dust opacity as well. Just want to kind of rough it all up here. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good so far. Uh, again, let's play around with that spread contrast and you can change the the roughness. That's looking pretty cool. So at this point, um, I'm, I'm actually losing, you know, a lot of my initial AO that I had. So I'm going to go down and drop down another adjustment at the top here. And if we come down to ambient equation, we're going to say recompute AO from new height. So I'm going to turn that on. You can see it makes it really pop. So now we can you know, mess around with our AO again. It's really just kind of recalculating it now with all the, the layers on top of everybody. So let's make a little bit more of a spread there. Yeah, something like that. Cool. Yeah, I'm really digging that. All right, so I'm going to say that that's actually good for now. And what I'm concentrating on now is adding some more details to this stuff. So I want to scatter a whole bunch of stuff. And now what I need to do is I need to go and start to source some other materials that are available up on substance source itself. So let's jump over in a substance source using the launcher. All right. So I'm just going to come over here. We're going to go to launcher. I'm just going to maximize this for now. And we're going to go to substance source. And what I'm interested in is all the new atlases that substance, or I should say Adobe uh, provides us now. So we have debris and that's what I'm going to use. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to scatter some paper. Yeah, let's get this one. So the way this works, when you hover over it, right, it'll give you a little preview of how it might scatter. I'm going to actually send it over to Substance Alchemist. So I'm just going to hit this button and it asks me I need to be logged in. And if all goes well, what's going to happen is it's going to then go and load this or download it and then send it on over to Substance Alchemist for me. So I'm just going to wait for that to finish and we'll be right back. All right, once it's done, you'll get some notification up here telling you that it sent it over to Alchemist. So let's go and check to see if it's correct. So to view it, you want to hit this little resources button here uh, to go to that tab. All right, and you can see if this is closed, you can always hit this little arrow right over here that we now have our cut cardboard pieces. All right, so it's a really cool way of, you know, just kind of managing all of your assets and stuff like that. So what I want to do now is I want to go over to the filters and I'm going to utilize this Atlas scatter layer or op filter. So I'm going to drag and drop that into there. And by default, nothing's going to happen because what's, what it's expecting is that you provide it some sort of input. So we need to give it that Atlas that we just uh, downloaded. All right. So let's go back to our resources and I'm literally just going to drag and drop this over here. Now be careful here because it's it's really easy to just go and assign it as a its own layer, like I just did there. All right. And that's cool, too, that you can go and layer that stuff together, but it's not exactly what I want. I want to actually assign it to this input right here. So what you need to do is if you pay close attention here, you can see that the little blue line jumps. And that just means now I'm going to assign it to the input one. There we go. Awesome. That is what I'm looking for. So what I can do now is select the Atlas scatter, not the cardboard pieces, and I can control the scattering from here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we aren't conforming to the background because you can see right now our scattered pieces of paper are getting affected by each of the planks over there. All right. So what I want to do is just say uh, conform to background is set to zero there. All right, and then we want to change the X amount, something a little bit less. Yeah, something like that. Maybe change the scale, do a little bit of random scale as well. 
Looks pretty cool too. And you can adjust the height scale a little bit. There we go. And then let's go mask some random so we don't get everything all over the place. And what I want to do now is I'm still getting those lines coming through. And that is because it's coming from the ambient occlusion that we calculated beforehand. So now we've got another element on, of our, on our texture. So what we need to do is we need to come into the advanced parameters here for the atlas scatter layer. And we want to come down to the ambient occlusion where it is. There it is. Recompute ambient occlusion. There we go. So now it's taking those pieces of paper into account. Awesome. All right. So that's looking way better. Cool. So let's play around with some of these other tweaks here before we get into the advanced parameters. Um, actually, I think we played around with a lot of this stuff. I'm just going to adjust the saturation a little bit. The, the hue, maybe. Maybe make them a little bit more varied in their value. Now you can also come in and control their height scale. All right, so you can put them all into the ground a little bit more, pop them up. Uh, you can also select the actual Atlas material here, and you've got a bunch of parameters that you can adjust as well. So you can come in here and adjust some of this stuff. So let's say, for instance, I want to increase that normal intensity on the, the pieces of paper. You can also change their high position as well. All right, so lots of ways to tweak stuff. Very cool. And you also notice that, you know, we're getting, you know, this very jagged look here, and that's coming from our viewer settings. So if we come over to the viewer settings over here and we go down to the shader, we can go and change the displacement quality. So this is where you can control all that stuff and the amplitude and stuff like that. You can also change the number of samples that we're doing. Yeah. Cool. I am digging that. All right. So let's go back to our filters over here. Now that we've got that all set up, let's go and select our Atlas Scatter, go into some of these advanced parameters now. And let's go and change some more stuff. So let's change maybe like a random hue, but not too much. There we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. And maybe we actually add a few more of these. Well, that looks pretty good just like that. Cool. All right. I think that is everything I want to do here. So to basically finish up this texture, I wanted to add one more um, element to this. And I think I'm going to go back to substance source over here. So I'm going to go back over to launcher and I saw the cigarette butts over here. I thought that'd be fun. So let's go and send this to substance alchemist. And once that's done, I'll be right back. Alrighty, let's go back now over to Alchemist. And if we go back to our resources, we now have our cigarette butt. So let's just collapse our last Atlas scatter. And we're going to go back to our filters and add another up here. Very cool. And just like we did before, let's go back to our resources and get the cigarette butts and assign it to the input. Like so. And now we have cigarette butts everywhere. All right. Cool, so let's go and let's start adjusting this. So the scale, let's do scale random, even though, you know, probably won't have too many of those guys. Different sizes, it's kind of a one size fits all for those things. So let's just keep adjusting these guys. I'm gonna make these a little bit smaller. There we go, that's pretty good. And let's change that value a little bit more so they're not all the same color. And let's go into our advanced parameters and we're going to recompute the ambient occlusion. That way we get that looking pretty good. Now, in this case, I do actually want to conform to the background because, well, some of these guys aren't going to be perfect for that. So I am actually going to turn that off. And let's also do a mask random. So we don't have so many cigarette butts on the ground. I don't want to make it look like this floor is being lived in by a chain smoker. Cool. So. With that, we now have our texture. And I think I'm going to go back to the paper. Let's hit the paper options here. And I want to make the scale just a little bit bigger. Yeah. Cool. And I also want to maybe change the height scale a little bit more. 
You can see as we do that, the cigarettes will try to adjust themselves appropriately. Let's go back to the cardboard layer here and play around with the height position as well. So I'm going to try to get them so they don't feel as flat. And really, this is what you do. That's why I love this so much. It's really fun, really easy, um, and really efficient when it comes to making textures. Cool. So I'm going to call that good for now. I think that's pretty good stuff. I think as a final pass, I am going to put on another layer of dust. So let's do that. So let's just put another layer of dust on top of all this. Let's just pull it back a little bit. Something like that. And maybe change the depth here. The volume. Definitely want to change that spread contrast. Yeah, we want to change the slope as well. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Very nice. And we'll pull back the opacity. We don't need it to be so intense. Cool. Look at that. We now have our texture. So once you're happy with uh, your completed design, what you can do is you can actually save this out as a preset itself. All right. So you can see right here, there's a little save button. So I'm going to hit the save button and I'm going to call this uh, dirty uh, wood floor. All right. That was, that was a fun one for sure. Okay. And what I want to do now is obviously I want to export all this stuff out. So what we can do is come over to the export tab over here. And we can um, just say export current view and that will launch this guy and you have the option to export out all the different textures. And you also, what I thought was really cool is you have the option to save it as an SBS or SBAR file. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to save it out as a TGA. We're going to do 2K texture and I'm going to send it to my folder for all this stuff. So let's go into the work folder and let's go into YouTube here. And let's go and just call this dirty. Actually, you don't need to make a folder for it. You just need the top folder because the export manager is going to nest it in a folder with the name of the material. So now if I hit uh, export, it's going to go and export everything for me. And then we can go and hit this little button. And boom, there we go. We now have all of our textures saved out and ready for our game. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to, you know, as I get more familiar with this, I want to really start to, you know, show you guys the power of all this and show you how to make your own custom filters, um, obviously how to make your own generators, stuff like that for Substance Alchemist. But this was just kind of a, a first step in that whole process. So we'll make more textures too. These are all really fun to do. I love the fact that you can just take some base materials and some patterns and some atlases and boom, have a whole new texture out of that. Thanks so much, guys.